Learning processes cannot only be designed by watching videos from learners. It is also possible to build learning processes around the curation of an educational video. The aim for students is to create their own instructional videos, which is an interesting alternative to lectures, posters or written assignments. At first, the learners need to gather the information which are important for the video. Next, ideally, you create a time schedule. When do you have time to prepare the materials? Do some test shots. Create the video. Do any post editing. And when does the video need to be ready? The next questions are, what is the aim of the video and who is the target group? Should the viewers be made aware of a certain topic? Should a certain problem be shown and solved? Should certain working methods or steps be shown? When these questions have been answered, the question of the video type arises. Depending on the technical equipment, this must either be specified by the teacher or the learners can decide for themselves how and with what they would like to design the video. Different design methods are available here. Easy to implement are laying videos, screencasts or stop-motion videos. If the learners are creating videos for the first time, the teacher should specify a design method and discuss it with the learners. After the aims of the video are clear and the design method has been selected, a script can be created. The script consists of a table with two columns. In the left column, there is the text that will be heard later in the video. In the right column, one can find notes on what should be seen at the different timestamps of the video. This script is also your storyboard. After the script has been completed, it is a good idea to try out and test whether everything that you noted in the script works so far. This shows if changes in the script or additional material are still needed. With the videos, it's like with many other things. The more time and effort you put into the production, the higher the quality can be. But you can also ask yourself the question how to reduce the effort to get an appropriate result in a certain time. Especially for learners who are doing this for the first time, it is important to keep the technical effort low to avoid overstraining themselves. The one-take principle is also suitable for this. With a one-take, you create the entire video in one shot without cuts and without post-processing. As a rule, the recording should be practiced and then recorded several times so that the best recording can be selected at the end. Screencasts and laying videos, for example, are very suitable for the one-take principle. The one-take principle also offers the possibility of equal conditions for all. That means learners who already have experience with the creation of videos have no special benefits. The focus should not be on the quality of the video, but rather on the creative presentation of the content. At the end, after the presentation of the video, the learners give each other feedback and reflect on the creation process. What went well? What would you do differently next time? Where do you see potential for development or what would you like to work on in the future? It is also a good idea to document the steps or the creation process in a learning diary or in a learning portfolio, which also serves as a written-out reflection.